All right, this is just a little uh, um, bash command line magic here to change the permissions to what we need. Uh, we need to change to our, our main um, web directory, which is uh, slash var slash www. Uh, basically, we need to change all the files in that directory to assure that we have the right permissions that um, uh, people out looking at the repository can read them but can't change them, and we want our users to be able to uh, uh, of course, our, our web dev users to be able to change and, and maintain the system. So uh, the first couple of commands there basically find all the files in the directory and change those permissions uh, to be correct. Uh, the other thing is there's a special archive directory here, and um, uh, those need to be set to full permissions for everyone. So the second two commands basically search out anything in the archive directory uh, and um, uh, make those changes. And if we take a look at our directory structure here, um, we can see that um, uh, we have an archive directory, admin application, a few different directories here, basically not a very complicated structure. Okay, again I'm going to clear the screen. Uh, the next thing we need to do is create a MySQL database, MySQL database. Uh, so I will pause the recording, set that up, and then we'll go over the commands. All right, what I've done in this first line here is I've just, um, uh, and remember this whole thing is our prompt now, uh, so I've just uh, logged into the uh, MySQL ad admin uh, uh, utility. Um, uh, this uh, logs in as root um, and prompts for password. When you enter the password, remember you have to enter the password you gave um, the MySQL root user when you installed Ubuntu, so I hope you wrote that down because it's a little bit tricky to recover. Uh, anyway, so now you can see we're connected to MySQL. The first thing we need to do is to create a database, create database uh, Omeka, um, and be sure to recall that uh, in uh, MySQL you need to end every command with that semicolon. Uh, so we create the database Omeka. Uh, then the next is a grant command. Um, we need to grant all privileges on, uh, on that database to our primary user. Uh, we're going to give them a um, um, a uh, MySQL uh, password, which um, I'm just using password here, but if this were a, if this were a production environment, you probably want to come up with a better password than that. Uh, and then this last command is flush privileges. Uh, that simply writes all the changes that we've made. Uh, this privileges make sure that uh, they're they're uh, um, uh, they're activated and so on. And then we just type in quit uh, to quit the uh, uh, quit the MySQL. Um, uh, application. Now we have a little bit of editing to do, uh, and so um, I'm going to use the nano um, text editor. Um, if you have another one you like, you're welcome to use it, but I'm going to show this using uh, nano, which is a little pure text editor. Uh, and we need to um, uh, edit the um, uh, Omeka database file to reflect our users and passwords. So uh, we enter it this way. And the file that we need to um, uh, modify is this db.ini file, which is one of the Omeka files that comes along with the installation. Uh, and you can see down here we just need to type in some uh, type in some information in place of these X's. Uh, so for host, I'm going to go localhost. Um, even though it's a remote database, it's still accessed as a localhost when you log into it. Uh, the username, of course, is our primary user, user1. Uh, the password here is the password that we gave um, in the grant command, uh, and as I recall, we just did password. Uh, the name and what they're asking for here is the name of the database, and the name of the database we gave was Omeka. Uh, and you can leave the prefix alone. Um, the port is currently commented out. If for some reason you're running your web server on something other than port 80, you can fix that here, but we're not. So we'll leave that alone now to get out of, um, uh, to get out of this and save the changes. We do a control X uh, and it says save modified buffer. We type in a Y for yes and that's the file that we're going to write. So I'm going to press enter. Uh, and now we've updated the um, update of the database information that Omeka needs to be able to make this work. So we're almost done. We just have one last thing to do, and that's to configure the Apache web server. 
so I'm going to um, uh, enable a module that Apache needs called the rewrite module. That's something that Omeka needs and that Apache has available. Uh, if you're curious about that, you can take a look on the Apache website. Uh, and to do that, I do sudo a2n mod rewrite. That A2N mod is a way to enable a, a module that's available for Apache. And um, we will restart that in a second, but um, I first need to um, uh, actually edit another file uh, that's going to allow uh, Omeka to use that um, um, HT access file. Uh, and the file that we need to edit is as follows. Okay, and that's a file that Apache uses that has some standard configurations in it. Uh, so again, we're going to use the nano text editor. Uh, and, and, you know, be sure to read the documentation on this so you, so you get um, exactly the, the, right, uh, the right text in here. Uh, what we want to look for is this directory um, slash var slash www because that's our, uh, that's our web directory. And the allow override is what we want. What that is going to do is, is as, as it comes by default, Apache doesn't allow the HD access file, um, but we need to make sure that uh, it does. So we change this none to all. Save the file just as we did before with a control X. We say yes, we want to save the changes. We type enter uh, to write that out. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to restart the web server. And that's just um, um, this command here, this init d um, apache2. Uh, a typo there. Watch out for those. Uh, restart. And that should restart our, uh, um, our web server. OK, now that actually finishes up the installation uh, as far as the um, uh, command line stuff goes. So what I'm going to do now is open up a browser and finish up the installation. Uh, we'll open up uh, Firefox here. You can use whichever browser you like. I'm going to type in this um, uh, URL for a web address. Uh, 1.3. Uh, and if, um, if we're lucky, uh, we're going to see another Omeka installation page. And as you can see, we now have the installation um, final installation page ready to go. Uh, so we need to give a super user account. That's the admin account. And um, I'm going to suggest we just do admin and password. You can use something else if you want, but write it down. Um, even though we don't have email running on this demo system, uh, we need to provide a default email address. Uh, it's a mandatory field. At, I'm going to run admin at localhost.net. Just make up a valid, a valid email address. Uh, same thing for administrator email. For site title, I'll make a demo. For site description, uh, keep on going down here. You can put in some copyright information if you want. Um, I would leave these image uh, uh, values alone unless you know right now that you want to uh, uh, change them. Um, show the empty elements. You can always um, uh, come back and change these things later. Go ahead and click install. And um, oh, I can remember that password. Okay, well, Amica is now installed. So you can check out the site or visit the admin panel. If you check out the site, uh, we can see we now have a running installation of Omeka. This is what it looks like. Of course, we don't have anything in it yet. Uh, but this is what it would look otherwise unconfigured to the user. Uh, if we want to look at the admin panel, we just append admin to the end of our URL here. Uh, that takes us to our login. Um, we need to log in as the administrator account we remembered. And now you can see your uh, um, now you can see your your administrator panel. Uh, and so that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, be sure to go back to the Omeka site, download the documentation, uh, take a look at how you actually add items to the archive, how you uh, how you manage this, and how you configure it. Uh, but that pretty much does it. Uh, so hope that's a help to you. Uh, download the document and then uh, visit the Omeka site to see if um, uh, what you can find there to help you help you continue with it. Thanks much.